Okay. Um, okay, so let's talk about, you know, demand. Um, where will it come from in the future? And if oil prices keep rising, um, will China and India really be able to afford to, you know, the oil to keep growing? Um, and who would be worst affected by the rising oil prices? There are three or four questions there. Let me take one by one. I think the bulk of the oil demand growth in the next years will come from uh, China and India, two giants, and they are transforming, in fact, our global uh, energy markets by their sheer size of their economy and population. According to our projections, over 50% of the oil demand growth in the future will come from these two countries, and the main driver will be the transportation sector cars, trucks, and jets. Today in China, 20 person out of 1,000 person own a car. In India, 8 person out of 1,000 person own a car. In United States, 860 person out of 1,000 person own a car. In Paris, where we live here in Europe, 680 person out of 1,000 person own a car. So with the increasing income levels, Chinese and Indian, one of the first things what they do is for convenience or for, for prestige reasons to buy a car, which in turn fuels the oil demand growth. So this will be the main driver, China and India, for the future oil demand growth. Uh, and this will also put a pressure on the oil markets, especially in a, a rather uh, slowly growing supply context. The huge demand growth from China and India will put pressure on the, on the markets, which would in turn mean higher prices to be with the higher prices. Uh, and the higher prices uh, hit the consumer countries' economies significantly. But there are different type of consumer countries. We at the IEA, International Energy Agency, represent the so-called rich consumer countries. United States, Canada, European countries, Japan and the others. But the countries which are hit the most are the poor countries with the high oil prices. We just made an uh, analysis and we have seen that uh, uh, between 2004 and 2007, in the last three years, the sub-Saharan African countries, the poorest countries in the world, paid significant amount of additional oil bill because of the high uh, oil prices and this choke off three percentage point of the uh, gross uh, domestic product of the economic growth and it is huge and in those in that region, more than 100 million people live, about 60 million of these people are uh, living under the poverty line, under uh, $1 per day uh, level. So these are the countries, these are the people who are going to suffer under the high oil prices, not the people in Paris or in Washington or in Brussels. Okay, I mean, we are, it's, there are poor people in other countries. I mean, you know, I was in on the east coast of America last week yeah. and th there's a lot of people living on the poverty line there and they have to you know get to work every day and they have to spend a lot of money on gasoline you know to say that the rich people aren't the rich countries aren't going to be affected i don't think that's quite it is i should say that the economies of the rich countries will not be affected per se but within the when you look at the income distribution within the countries of course the poorest segments of uh, the countries will be affected uh, the most the, the people who earn less money than the national averages will, will be hit the most. Because uh, the, for the rich people, when you compare this to the oil price shocks in 1980s, for example, 1970s, we became richer compared to, in terms of the national economy uh, compared to that. But there are still, of course, poor segments uh, of the population. They will be hit as well. Um. <clears throat> I mean, some people I've talked to have said that, you know, this might trigger this peak oil and the rising oil prices might trigger another, you know, great depression or, you know, a serious recession worldwide. Do you think that's a possibility? It depends on where, we, where the prices... Uh, okay. <clears throat> the prices uh, play an important role in the economies and uh, whether or not these price levels uh, will lead to a, a big depression in the, in the economy or it will uh, cause a slowdown will be depending on the level of prices. We have seen that the levels we are now uh, uh, seeing, the prices between 80 and $100, uh, 
do not necessarily lead a major depression, but we see a slowdown of the, uh, uh, the economic growth, which is not a good news for the consumers. But at the same time, I believe for the producers in the long term as well, the slowdown of the economy. So uh, with those levels, with the levels we have now, I do not see that we see a major uh, depression, but I see a slowdown in some countries, and if it continues, so a recession in some uh, key uh, consuming countries. I mean, if, you, if we are 12 and a half million barrels a day short in seven years' time, what do you think? Because you were here, as you're saying, like $85 a barrel, but you know, we're already at 100. So we don't know, do we, really? We, no one really knows what the price is going to be in seven years' time. Uh, if this, uh, the next six, seven years are very critical because the demand pressure is very high, which will come from China and India because they are experiencing an economic boom in those countries, 10%, 11% economic growth every year, and the supply prospects are very sluggish. So therefore, next seven, eight years is very uh, critical. If we cannot slow down the oil demand growth, and if we cannot put new projects in place in a timely uh, manner, we can definitely see an abrupt escalation of the prices, which is not a good news. Um, okay, so what, what, what would be sent, I mean, let's talk about some solutions now, okay. So what would be some, you know, sensible policy decisions to try and, because I know you're talking about, you, you know, you were talking about trying to cut consumption, but the price will do that, you know, it's unlikely that what you were saying about the, in the past history of the U.S. conservation, it takes 20 years to, to bring in major... What, what, what can we do to try and at least alleviate some of the worst effects in, in let's say, the, just the Western countries at the moment? I think if we should try to uh, minimize the, uh, first of all, use of oil in, the, in our transportation system, in the cars, trucks and jets, and we try to find ways to use oil less and less. In many countries, there is a huge room, huge potential to use the oil much more uh, efficiently. For example, in the United States, average cars in the United States use uh, three times more uh, oil, uh, gasoline, compared to European countries or to, or to Japan. There is a lot of improvement there. This is first. And the second, we can look at the option of biofuels much more carefully, trying to use better technologies in order to make use of biofuels to replace at least a small part of the uh, oil uh, demand. And third, we should uh, perhaps, uh, since oil is a very important, very valuable uh, source, we should uh, have rather higher domestic prices when you look at some countries, such as the United States, it is very, very cheap compared to uh, Japan or, or, or European standards. So it may, it may not be a bad idea to uh, increase the domestic price and the taxes in order to improve the uh, efficiency. So these are the ways uh, to improve the, on the demand side. And on the supply side, uh, we may try to uh, look for oil uh, in the United States and elsewhere uh, in the areas that are promising but are not accessible for this and that uh, reason, perhaps one should look at those uh, uh, areas as well. Having said that, even if we slow down the oil demand growth through these measures I mentioned to you, even if we get additional oil growth from in the United States or in Europe from the rather smaller fields, we will not be able to extend the lifetime of oil for a very long time. We have to put a lot of money and in research and development to, uh, to get energy, new energy technologies in place to be able to uh, replace oil with alternative fuels and technologies. Because uh, I believe we have to leave oil before oil leaves us.